Hey, I know it's been a while uh, since I did a video, but uh, I've been a little busy with the A9. And now that the launch is behind us and the A9 is getting ready to ship this week, I thought it'd be good to kind of go back a little bit and start picking up some other areas of interest with the Sony cameras. And today, um, what I'm going to do is kind of show you how I manage color uh, using the Sony mirrorless cameras. It's a very, very slick system. And um, what I want to do, uh, surprisingly enough, is go back to where it all started for me, which is the A6000. And um, I'm going to show you the color uh, white balance settings, but then I'm going to show you something you may not have discovered. A whole other uh, way to control the color very precisely, which a lot of people miss. A lot of pros don't even know it exists. So. What we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, A6000 in this example, and then because the menus are so different, I'm also going to use the A6500 as well. But they're effectively the same. Uh, you'll see some differences here and there. So let's start. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in uh, my Atomos unit so I can record the actual screen grabs from the back of the camera of the A6000. So let's get started. Okay, so I've connected the Atomos unit to the A6000, uh, so you can kind of see what the camera's seeing. And uh, now I'm gonna begin uh, recording so that you can actually see what's going on. And so the very first thing I'm gonna do is hit the function button, which is gonna launch me into the auto white balance setting. Now, as you're looking at this, the auto white balance does a really nice job, obviously. And uh, since the only light that's on right now in the room is this daylight coming through the window, these two are pretty close, but you can see that the, the window setting, the sunlight setting is letting a lot more warmth in than the auto white balance setting. So this one probably be more accurate, but you might prefer this. Shadow introduces a whole lot more of that warmth because it, it like lowers the color temperature. Cloudy and shadow are very close, but close. Incandescent, uh, everything turns blue because um, there's no incandescent light, which is yellow, which is why everything looks blue. On down, we have fluorescent warm white. We have fluorescent cool white. We have fluorescent day white. Then we have fluorescent daylight. And then we have white balance flash. And then what I call the fish setting, but technically Sony calls it the underwater auto setting. Now, strangely enough, there is a particular type of fluorescent light fixture that works great with the fish setting. And I do use it a lot, so. And then you get into where you can actually control the Kelvin yourself. Um, and then you can do custom white balance as well at the bottom. And then, uh, and there's your custom setup. So and then you're back to the beginning of the menu. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is you can actually say, for instance, lock in a daylight setting. So now my, my daylight setting is in there. But in that mode, I can actually hit the right-hand side of that same round wheel in the back. And now I can actually begin to introduce my own color temperature set. So if I want to add purple, I can. If I want to add green, I can. If I want to add yellow, I can. If I want to add magenta and red, I can. And what I find um, is very nice with the Sonys is to go two clicks left and two clicks down. And that gives me a super clean look to my video and my still photography. And what I love about this in particular is that, like, let's say I'm going to go do a wedding. Uh, I go into the church and I can, with the EVF, I can look through in real time and I can see the exact light that I want to have. And I can make the camera, I can customize the light, uh, the color temperature exactly what I want to. I can find the right range in the menu. But then I can go and I can use this other feature to um, uh, knock in exactly what I want. And, in, and what it does for me, it pays huge dividends to be able to learn how to do this in camera because it means I don't have to fool with it in post ever. So like when I go into a church and I'm going to shoot a wedding, it's the most fantastic thing never to have to touch the color temperature at all. Maybe I'll touch the exposure balance or something like that, but I really like the ability to be free from doing all that nonsense and having to do each one individually. It's just silly. Even if you're gang uh, toning and you're grabbing a whole bunch of images and applying, you're synchronizing them, it's still much easier to do it before you shoot the picture rather than after you've done it already. 
So this is a really cool feature. Now let's, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a look at the A6500 and see how its menus differ from the A6000. So let's take a look. All right, so I've got my camera fired up and I hit my function button and I'm already in auto. And you can see here, here's the, the daylight from auto out white balance, the cloud, the shade setting, cloudy setting, the tungsten slash incandescent setting. Then we go into fluorescent warm white, fluorescent cool white, fluorescent day white, fluorescent daylight. Then we get into water, white balance with flash. Then we get into underwater auto, which I love. Then there's that, there's that certain fluorescent fixture that's there. Then there's where you can control your white balance yourself. And then look at this. There's custom one, two, and three. So it gives you a lot more options in the A6500. Um, and then finally, you have the custom setup. Um, but remember that any of these, even if you went into cloudy, you can go to the right and you can pick this up and you can start adding and subtracting color in very, very precise ways. And this is a really powerful tool that we can use to really dial in exactly what we need. In my work, um, I often use different manufacturer strobes in my photography. And so oftentimes the front panels are differing in light te temperature quite a lot. And, and I love the ability that I can add a little blue and calm things down, uh, get the warmth out. Um, also, I use this feature all the time when I'm using um, LED lighting for video production, especially for interviews, where I get the light just right, but it just doesn't quite look right in camera. And what I can do is I can add, I can add or subtract, I can warm it, I can, I can change the Kelvin, but then after the Kelvin is as close as I want to get it, then I can apply this other um, color correction it's a very powerful tool, and I hope this helps you. Um, and all the Sony cameras, even the A99 II, the A99, sorry, the, the sun's going in and out today, um, but uh, it's a really powerful tool to be able to really harness your color uh, and really nail it all down so that you get really consistent results, uh, shoot after shoot, and uh, camera to camera as well. And that's the last thing I want to talk about. I do a lot of multi-camera video production work. And the even though the A6500 has the same exact chip sensor in it that the A6300 does, they really do vary slightly. Every camera varies slightly from one another. And I use this feature um, on that XY axis, that box, to really get more close to every camera looking the exact same in terms of color. And again, it, this helps me so much in post-production because I don't have to worry about it by the time I get in the editing software. So this is Pat Murphy Racy, Sony Artisan, uh, hoping that this is helping you with your color management. Thanks very much and have a great day.